How to play finger style or finger picking guitar. Lesson 12. In this week's tutorial, we'll follow a similar lesson plan to the previous tutorial. That was lesson 11. In that, we'll have an exercise first and then we'll follow that up with a tune. And this week's tune will be the finger style version of the House of the Rising Sun. If you're new to this guitar course, you might want to go through the previous lessons. And if you do, you'll find the playlist to all the course down below in the description. And you'll also find the course at www.ebooksforguitar.com And you'll also find the tab for this lesson there as well. Right, let's get started with exercise one. This exercise has got a rather interesting and unusual sound. And it's because it's mainly seventh chords, or to give them their full names, dominant seventh chords. And you'll also notice it's using alternating bass lines throughout. Now, the chords using this exercise are fairly common ones, which hopefully you're familiar with. But if you're not, just pause the video at this point and practice the chords before you start the exercise. I think you'll find this exercise a lot easier to learn if you've practiced the chords before you start the lesson. Another important thing I need to point out about this exercise and this week's tune is that they're both in 6-8 time, which means there's six beats in the bar. So, bearing all this in mind, here's exercise one at 100 beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And remember, in 6-8 time, two bars will be effectively 12 beats. Something to watch out for if you use your own metronome is how your metronome represents 6-8 time. With some metronomes, the beats per minute will always be the value of a crotchet. However, with other metronomes, the beats per minute will automatically switch over to quavers when you go into 6-8 time. So, if your metronome is in the crotchet setting, and it says 50 beats per minute. This is the equivalent of 100 beats per minute using quaver time because it's exactly twice the crotchet. Conversely, if your metronome is in the quaver values and you set it to 100 beats per minute and it seems very slow, that's because it would have gone to 50 beats per minute in crotchet time. Either way, it's quite easy to know it's out because it's a massive difference, it's half the speed, so you'll be able to hear it. With a lot of commercially produced sheet music, you'll find the speed near the top of the tune, and it'll say something like a crotchet equals 120, or a quaver equals 120, and this way you'll know exactly what it means. To help you remember this idea, so if ever you come across it, you know what's going on, I'll use both values through to the end of this lesson. So that last exercise was played at 200 quaver beats per minute or 100 crotchet beats per minute. Right, let's take a look at the finger picking pattern we'll be using for this exercise. And it's primary, annular, middle, index, middle, annular. Let's just try that finger picking pattern a few times using open strings and we'll use a metronome speed of 70 crotchet beats per minute or 140 quaver beats per minute. And 
here that is again if you want another try. If you find it a little difficult, just pause the video here and practice the finger picking pattern without a metronome for a while until you can get it fluent. But if you found it quite easy, let's try it again with a metronome speed of 80 crotchet beats per minute or 160 quaver beats per minute. This time you'll get the chance to play the finger picking pattern eight times in a row. Once you're happy with the finger picking pattern, the rest of this exercise should be relatively easy. However, you do need to pay attention to what bass string is being played because of the alternating bass line. The thumb or primary finger is working quite hard in this exercise. However, something that makes this exercise easier to play is the fact that the last four lines is more or less a repeat of the first four lines meaning there's less to learn. Right, let's try the first line repeated a few times to get used to that moving bass line. Here it is at 70 crotchet beats per minute or 140 quaver beats per minute with a two bar introduction and we'll play it four times in a row. You'll notice I was playing my A7 with the second and third finger. And this is to make it easier to move from this position over to the D7. Because the second and third finger more or less hold a pattern. We just move that across and add the first finger. Most of the time the A7 is fingered with the first and second finger. And that's because it predominantly goes to chords like G or D where it's easier to go from the first and second finger to the next chord. However, it's not cheating and it's good practice to adjust your fingering in order to make the chords flow more smoothly, which is what we've done in this case. Let's try playing line 1 and 2 at 70 crotchet beats per minute or 140 quaver beats per minute with a two bar introduction. If you found that difficult or you couldn't do it, you might need to pause the video at this point and go away and practice that for a bit. Otherwise, let's try playing it again at the same speed with a two bar introduction. Right, let's move on to the next line and I think this change is the hardest change in the whole piece going from the D7 to the G7 and unfortunately there's no easy way around this and no cheats you just have to practice building up the speed and the only tip I can give you is try and get the bass note there first because this is the first note you need to play so let's just hear the second line and the third line so you can hear how it joins.
Again, if you feel you need to practice the change between the D7 and the G7, you could pause the video here and go away and practice that for a bit. Otherwise, we'll move on and try joining the first three lines together. So, here they are with a two bar introduction at 70 crotchet beats per minute or 140 quaver beats per minute. Right, let's take a look at line 4. And I'm happy to say that the change between line 3 and line 4 is very easy because it's quite simple to move from a G7 to a C because they're a very similar shape. However, beware with line 4 because it's the only line with a chord change in the middle of it. Albeit a very simple change, just make sure you're aware of it. So, here's line 4 with a two bar introduction. Now let's try playing the first four lines at 70 crotchet beats per minute or 140 quaver beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And let's try that one more time. If you look at this exercise closely, you'll notice that the first four lines are more or less identical to the second four lines, which means you've pretty much got this exercise. Here's the last four lines being played at 70 crotchet beats per minute or 140 quaver beats per minute and with a two bar introduction. And here that is one more time. Now, here's the entire exercise being played at 70 crotchet beats per minute or 140 quaver beats per minute with a two bar introduction.
And here that is again. And finally, if you're more advanced as a guitarist, or you're feeling a little adventurous, here's the entire of exercise 1 being played at 100 crotchet beats per minute, or 200 quaver beats per minute. And here that is again, one last time. As I've pointed out in previous videos, even though we're learning the exercise with a metronome, you don't need to continue that way. Once you're happy with it, you can lose the metronome and practice it without it. And this way you can put a little bit of ebb and flow and feeling into the tune. However, if you stick with the metronome, you'll become very robotic and you don't want to do that. Right, let's move on to the tune. The House of the Rising Sun a fingerstyle version. This tune is fairly straightforward, but it's best to start it slow and build up the speed. Most of the chord changes are really easy, except this one really hard one, and that's the change from D major to F major. Now, if you've not done F major, or you're not very good with it, it might be worth you looking at the video I've done just on that chord so you can try and improve it before going into this tune. Another thing you need to be aware of is the fact that lines 5, 6 and 7 repeat and this creates the bridge between the verses. This version of the House of the Rising Sun is a little different to the Animals version. It's in a different key and because you finger pick it, it's got a slightly different rhythm. However, we will look at the original version in a later lesson as it's a plectrum tune. The finger picking pattern for this tune is primary, index, middle, annular, middle, index. And we've done this finger picking pattern quite a lot before. You might recall that it's the same finger picking pattern we used in Everybody Hurts by REM. So theoretically, you shouldn't have any trouble with it. Here's the finger picking pattern being played on just open strings at 70 crotchet beats per minute or 140 quaver beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Try and play along with it if you can and I'm going to play it eight times. If you're happy with the way you played that finger picking pattern, let's continue on into the tune. If not, pause the video here and just practice it for a minute. Here it is again anyway, just so you can practice it a little more. Right, 
let's have a very quick look at the first line, which is very easy. And you'll notice this change from the A minor to the C happens several times through the tune. And you literally just have to move one finger. Here's the first line twice with a two bar introduction at 70 crotchet beats per minute or 140 quaver beats per minute. And here that is again. Now line two is the really difficult line. And because the change is so awkward, and you have to move every finger. It might be a good idea to just practice strumming between the two chords first before you try finger picking it, just to speed up the chord changes. Let's just try that at 70 crotchet beats per minute or 140 quaver beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And we'll play it four times. But if you find you need to practice it some more, do so and keep trying to speed up the chord change as you go. Here that is again, but a little bit faster at 100 crotchet beats per minute or 200 quaver beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Right. Let's try the second line twice finger picked with a two bar introduction at 70 crotchet beats per minute or 140 quaver beats per minute. Right, let's bring that together with line one and we'll try and play line one and line two and we'll do it at the same speed with a two bar introduction. We won't repeat that section now because we'll be doing it again in a second. However, we'll jump on to line four and we'll play that now. And it's very easy. It's just an E7 with an alternating bass line. So let's try that at the same speed, 70 crotchet beats per minute or 140 quaver beats per minute with a two bar introduction. And we'll do it twice. Now you can see we skipped line three because it was the same as line one. But now we can bring all the first four lines together. So let's try those at the same speed with a two bar introduction.
let's do the first four lines again with the two bar introduction. Looking at the last four lines, you'll notice lines five and six are just a repeat of the first two lines, which means there's only the last two lines of the song to learn. And those two lines are just one line repeated. Here's the last two lines being played at 70 crotchet beats per minute or 140 quaver beats per minute with a two bar introduction. Here, it's worth pointing out, when you come across a chord like the E7 here, where you're only playing one note, you only really need to finger that note, and it'll hopefully make the tune flow more smoothly. However, if you're treating this tune as an exercise, it's probably better to play the entire chord, and that way you're practicing the chord changes and speeding up the chord changes. So there's two ways of working on this tune really. One as a performance piece or two as an exercise. And it's down to you how you choose to treat it. At this stage, you'll notice we're skipping the repeats. And this is so we can work our way through the tune and get all the chord changes to flow smoothly. Once you're happy with that, we can put the repeats back in. So, Bearing this in mind, let's try playing right the way through the tune at the same speed with the two bar introduction. And here it is again. Unless you're a fairly experienced guitarist, you're not going to get this tune during this lesson. You'll need to go away and practice it, either with a metronome or just by yourself to build up the speed and fluidity. Once you're fairly happy with the speed and fluidity, you can then practice it with a metronome or a drum kit or other musicians. Unlike some of the exercises and other tunes we've done, this is far more strict when it comes to the timing. So it is a good one to practice with a metronome. If you are a more experienced guitarist and you want a bit of a challenge, here it is being played at 100 crotchet beats per minute or 200 quaver beats per minute with a two bar introduction. 
and we'll go straight through without a repeat. Now, finally, here it is again at the same speed and with a two bar introduction, but this time we'll introduce the repeats. <laughs> I'm going to conclude this lesson with some thoughts on the song that might be useful to you. And the first one is that what you've learnt is one verse. So if you wanted to do several verses, you just repeat what you've learnt without a pause or a gap. You just go straight back through it and you just play it as many times as you need. The second thought is, if you're struggling with the speed, don't worry about it. This tune is a lot older than the famous version by the animals and because it is so old it's been done by numerous different artists and bands at loads of different speeds and some of the slower ones actually sound better because it has more of a bluesy tone to it. My third thought is that this tune is in A minor and it's a great tune for improvising with the A minor pentatonic blues scale. However, if you've never improvised before or you don't know this scale, I'll put a link down below in the description and then you can learn how to improvise. I'll upload a backing track separately and then you can have a go at improvising with it. Otherwise, you could go through the lessons and then have a go at improvising with it and it'll give you something a little different to play on your guitar. Here's the tune and the A blue scale being played of the backing so it gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm going to sign out now because the end of this video will have metronome beats at various speeds but all in 6-8 time so you can practice with them if you want to. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more tutorials like it please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And if you need to be sitting with the tab in front of you to practice this tune you'll find it at www.ebooks4guitar.com and if you click on the lessons and then select the finger picking course in you'll be able to see the PDF there. Thank you very much for watching and a special thanks to my subscribers because their support helps to keep the channel going and without them I could never put out the free lessons. So to anyone who supports the channel, I do give a special thanks.